What's going on guys, this is Rob, and if you're enjoying the content that I'm uploading onto my channel, then feel free to subscribe, and you can also offer suggestions on topics and characters and storylines and whatnot that we can have discussions on uh, later on in this channel. Alright, so now that we finished uh, Planet Hulk, World War Hulk, uh, The Son of Hulk Volumes 1 and 2, Fall of the Hulks and World War Hulks, <laughs> as well as the first part of uh, Jeff Loeb's run on Red Hulk. We are going to God. We've covered a lot of Hulk stuff. Uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna kind of go back and we're gonna run over Hero Kala. Now, the reason why I'd held off on him is because his origin story did not tie into anything that was going on in Marvel Comics at the time in relation to the Hulk, with the exception of what was going on with Scar, son of Hulk. But at the time, we were transitioning from one Hulk story to the next, and so it kind of, at least it, to me at the time, it didn't make a whole lot of sense to suddenly stop everything and then go into the origin of Hero Kala. So I figured we go ahead and wait to the end and it really kind of works because what this does is this actually wraps back around to the beginning or I guess to the introduction of Scar uh, into the Marvel Universe. Now the kicker here is that the introduction of Hero Kala really came as like backup features called Shadow Tales. And what this did is it basically gave us like the other half of the coin where Scar had been birthed from Kyra and basically uh, was imbued with a combination of her old power or I guess the ability to tap into the old power as well as uh, the intrinsic uh, principles of the Hulk, which is to say he takes on, you know, superior strength when he undergoes a physical transformation, albeit, you know, not limitless. Hero Kala was not the same way. Instead, Hero Kala had the old power, which allowed him to, uh, to basically, you know, survive uh, the explosion of Crown City. But aside from that, he never really used it for quite some time. In fact, uh, after he was discovered by Axeman Bone, he was really just taken as a slave. I mean, that's, that's really what his life was. And so all the events that went on with regards to the Incredible Hulk prior to his birth, he heard all those through stories the same way that Scar heard those. But at the same time, while Scar was off doing his thing and he was trying to gain the old power, Hero Kala was literally in the background watching all of it unfold as a slave of Axeman Bone, mostly hearing tale from people who were passing through or people who had been captured or even the soldiers of, uh, of Axeman Bone himself or Axeman Bone when he was defeated by Scar. So again, it was really all just secondhand and so he was kind of left to everything. But because of all this, uh, Hero Kala developed an insatiable hatred for Scar. And the reason why is because there came a point whereby Hero Kala was able to basically escape the confines of Axeman Bone and just kind of wander out into the wild. Now, this coincided with uh, with Scar fighting a former priest of Axeman Bone named Hero Amen, who was able to use the old power. But because of the fact that, that uh, you know, Scar was able to tap into the old power itself, combined with his Incredible Hulk attributes, he was easily able to subdue Hero Amen. And because he was able to subdue him, Amen was basically just kind of left for dead. Eventually, Hero Kala stumbled upon Hero Amen, and he was basically told the only way to use the old power is to kill a person who has it. Not only that, he actually tells them the story of a, of a young man named Koam or Kaum. It's K-O-A-A-M, so I'm not exactly sure how it is you pronounce it. But what we're told is that at some point, this kid had basically studied under the knee of those people who were part of the Shadow Priest who were able to tap into the, the old power itself. The problem with this was that this all took place before the Incredible Hulk had left Planet Hulk. So after the defeat of the Red King, when the Incredible Hulk had formed Crown City alongside Kyra, all these priests had basically left to go to Crown City, after which they were basically destroyed when the ship blew up and killed everybody. But Coem was basically the, the guy left behind and then he was able to tap into the old power. The issue with this, absolute power corrupts absolutely and it basically led to him being somewhat of like a like a savior and then ultimately spurning his own existence because he couldn't quite control the old power. And so because of that, he had effectively gone insane and uh, in response to this, Hero Amon had taken the power in turn. Now, uh, what Hero Amon says is that if Hero Kala really wants the old power, he has to kill Hero Amon to do it. This actually coincides with Axeman Bone stumbling across Hero Kala and realizing that if Hero Kala has the old power, he could be used by Axeman Bone to kill Scar. And so Axeman Bone gives Hero Kala uh, an axe that says, kill Hero Amon, kill this shamed priest. But when, when Hero Kala does that, the old power actually takes off and goes somewhere else. And so because of this, Hero Kala never actually gains the old power for himself, or at least it didn't seem to be that way. Now, what this does is this wraps back around, or at least it, it kind of uh, transitions into the third volume of Son of the Hulk. Now, reconciling Hero Kala in terms of how he was written by Greg Pak versus how he was written by Paul Jenkins has been almost impossible to find. It seems to me that uh, Greg Pak basically introduced Hero Kala or told the story of him just as like a backup feature for what was going on with regards to uh, the events behind the scenes of Scar, Son of Hulk. You know, it, it may have been that Greg Pak had the intention of rolling over Hero Kala into being the son of the Hulk and just didn't have time to do it. And so the task was handed over to Paul Jenkins. I don't have the answer to that question. And, and really, it's kind of something that I wish I knew. But regardless of those circumstances, 
circumstances, um, the the transition of the Son of Hulk storyline from Scar to Hero Kala actually comes by way of the destruction of Sakaar by the hands of Galactus. Now, what this does is it kind of picks up with Sakaar being destroyed, but again, it's basically Axeman Bone and a handful of other people jumping into whatever ships that are powered by the old power and trying to get out of there as fast as they can. The issue with this is that these ships were created by the members of the Shadow, by these old people who used to wield the old power. So because of that, Axeman Bone and his people don't really know how to decipher them. But in the back of all this, and it's actually kind of cool the way that Paul Jenkins does this, in the back of all this is just Hero Kala watching all these events unfold. Now, Old Sam really looks on this and says, this, this is weird, this shouldn't be happening. We should not be flying right now. Somebody somewhere is using the old power to get us out of here. Now, the kicker, or the reason why this is kind of a big deal is because Galactus is basically consuming the old power of Sakaar. And so as far as Old Sam is concerned, that power shouldn't exist. No one should be able to use it. But somebody somewhere is still being able, you know, is still able to tap into it. Now, again, we had kind of talked about this in, in Scar Son of Hulk, and we'll actually talk about this a little more uh, as we get further into this video. But the old power is not confined to Sakaar. The old power is like this cosmic force that exists. And we'll learn it, you know, in terms of why it exists in the first place. But it's a universal force. It's not something that's confined to one location. You know, as long as there are beings that can tap into it, it can be used by anybody anywhere. And so it creates kind of a, an interesting situation. But effectively, again, we learn that all of this is being done by Hiro Kala himself. He's basically piloting the ship, getting them out of there. Now, this is when old Sam begins to realize that Hiro Kala himself is the Sakarsen. And what Paul Jiggins does is he kind of does a little bit of backpedaling here. And it's kind of a weird situation because remember, in Scar Son of the Hulk, what old Sam had said was that he had created the legend of the Sakarsen for the purpose of giving his people a reason to try to escape their own bondage. But what he stated was that he, you know, he never believed in the legend of the Sakarsen. He never thought that it was true. What Paul Jiggins does is Paul Jiggins comes back and says, no, 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 that was old Sam lying about lying. What old Sam really believed was that the legends were probably true at one point in time, but that people couldn't hold on to those legends. And so he made up the Sakarsen for the purpose of giving them a reason to leave, uh, or I guess try to uh, try to fight on their own. But in the end, he still kind of believed in those legends in the first place. He just didn't really know if they were true or not. And so again, it was really kind of doubling back just for the purpose of making the story make sense. It's not the worst thing ever in the world, but again, you know, what also happened here is that Galactus, after consuming the old power of Sakaar, had basically become like a crack addict. Uh, that's really what he was. He was addicted to the old power. I mean, it was a universal force that he had never experienced before, a universal source of power that he's never had. I mean, because keep in mind, all he's been doing is just riding around the, the cosmos for however many billion years, consuming, you know, life energy out of different planets. But it's like, it's like eating a cheeseburger every single day of your life. Well, then now he's got pizza and he's like, holy shit, this pizza is amazing. And so now he wants more. And that's what he's doing. And this is really where Paul Jiggis begins to delve into the territory of saying that the old power is a universal source of power because all Galactus is doing, while he can't necessarily sense its location, what he's doing is literally just like running from one planet to the next, consuming it in the hopes that it has the old power. And this is why the Silver Surfer was saying that in the Scar Son of Hulk videos, if Galactus consumes the old power, it'll be one of the most dangerous things to happen. Yes, it'll satiate his hunger, but the other half of this is that it'll also, potential anyway, to jumpstart his hunger worse than it was before. And so what this does is it basically means that Galactus is now addicted and he's basically going to consume every single planet he can as fast as he can in order to satiate his desire for more old power. Now, this is something that Hero Kala picks up on. And so what he does is he actually transitions them to a whole other planet called Gyausar, I think it is. I don't remember exactly how you pronounce it, Gyausar or something along those lines. But uh, this is a planet that has not known conflict for around 10,000 years. Not only that, this planet is rich in old power. So again, to kind of bring in a Star Wars analogy, you know, it's like the, it's like a planet like, uh, like Malachor or it's a planet, you know, like the Korban home planet of the Sith, where it's just rich in dark side energy. Uh, because of this, the, the people who had settled here, those members who have, have, or those individuals who had essentially tapped into the old power, uh, had basically harnessed all life on this planet in several different ways. The first was by terraforming it in a way that basically worked for them, but the second was by controlling the biological organisms on this planet using something akin to obedience disks and basically bending them to their whim. And so they literally went through and just kind of like tamed a savage planet. The result was that while there was some warring that went on between the various factions that were here, ultimately they kind of drew a truce coming to the realization that if any one of them were to basically disturb uh, the balance that's been struck here, it would lead to the destruction of the entire planet. So it was really more of a truce by circumstance as opposed to a truce by like, you know, altruistic means. But the fact remains here that when uh, when Hiro Kala arrives, uh, anybody who shows up on this planet is immediately taken prisoner, executed, and their technology is, is basically usurped or it's, uh, it's assimilated into whatever kingdom happens 
to take them over. Uh, the kingdom in question here immediately grabs or immediately comes across Hirokala and basically says, you know, you are going to be taken our prisoner. But the cool thing about this, and this is actually what's kind of interesting, is that Hirokala immediately begins to basically say, like, I am a god. And so, you know, within the great walls of, or I guess as part of this territory of Fractus, this city whose walls have basically been, you know, who, who, that have never been penetrated, what Hirokala is doing is he's basically or passing himself off saying, I am a god. All of you will view me as gods, you know, because I have absolute power here. Now, he demonstrates this in a couple different ways. The first is to, again, manipulate the biological organisms around them, a couple of whom are basically, uh, you know, soldiers or members of their uh, of their group and transform them into these giant monsters. Now, of course, sending them all across their way, laying waste to these forces is not necessarily something that's taken, you know, very seriously by the guys in charge of the main city of Fractus itself. And the reason why is because for them, destroying a few guys of their military is no big deal. Breaking their, their walls, which haven't been broken for two or three hundred years, is a big deal. And so if the forces of Hero Kala get close enough to worry about, well, of course, he has this sword that basically allows him to tap into the primal energies of the planet, which he believes will allow him to come out on top here. But at this point, things are pretty straightforward. Um, these are, 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 you know, in terms of conflict and battle, it's really just Hero Kala and his forces laying waste to everybody and obliterating virtually everything. But uh, eventually the king steps forward, or at least the king of this first city steps forward and says, you know, I challenge you to a duel by, you know, honorable combat. Hero Kala accepts and then immediately topples him. I mean, just takes this guy out in no uncertain terms. So the way he does it is gruesome. I mean, you know, he, he basically tells this guy, how do you see me? Do you see me as a man or do you see me as a god? And the guy's like, well, you know, I see you as a god. I see the power that you wield. I see you as a god. And he says, good. And then just gouges the guy's eyes out. Now, there's a reason why Hero Kala is doing this. And we'll find out later on because this is why I love, you know, Paul Jiggins writing is because he writes the story and it seems pretty straightforward. Then he just turns everything on its head at the end and it comes out really, really cool. It's one of the reasons why I loved uh, his creation of the century. It was one of the best stories of all time. But the fact remains here that uh, using this, using the combination of this sword as well as his own old power, the hero Kala is able to bring the walls of this city crumbling down. And so from here, his forces basically make their way in and begin tearing everybody apart. Now, at this point, this is when we start to get into the realization that there are people who are working directly against, or I guess, you know, going for their own goals. The first one is the Republic of Terrafor, and the second one is the city of Dearth. Now, these are the two other kingdoms that exist on this planet, and they have their own desires, they have their own, you know, intentions of maintaining absolute power. The kicker with all this is that they're actually going to end up working against Hiro Kala later on, but for the moment, uh, we basically have, again, Princess Omaka and Old Sam. Now, for those of you guys who are just joining in with regards to a lot of this Hulk stuff, Princess Omaka was the daughter of the Red King, the guy that originally ran uh, Sakaar when the Incredible Hulk first arrived during the Planet Hulk event. After he was cast out, his daughter Omaka basically began the process of trying to make sure her father never rose to power again, but also killing off Axeman Bone and trying to reestablish the Imperial Kingdom, but do it in a way to where there would be a fair and just leadership uh, of the planet Sakaar. The issue with this is that in her mind, Old Sam knows something that he's not telling anybody. He knows something about what's going on because, you know, what's what's basically happening is Hiro Kala seems to be getting corrupted by his power. He's being corrupted by his use of the old power, and every time he uses it, he becomes worse and worse. And so, you know, by virtue of the words that he's saying, by the things that he's talking about, you know, Omaka says, there's something that you know. You need to tell me what you know or I'm going to kill you. And what Old Sam says is that the old power is basically artificial. It was created as a counterbalance to the power cosmic of Galactus. And the reason for this was because Galactus, again, for billions and billions of years, had just been traveling around the cosmos consuming planets. And so a handful of individuals came together and artificially created the old power for the purpose of being able to challenge the power of Galactus when the Silver Surfer and Galactus showed up with the intention of laying waste to whatever planet they happened to be on. The problem with this is that the old power began to corrupt those who were starting to use it. And so over time, it basically led to their own destruction. And that's the legacy of the old power. Those who use it are essentially bent to the will of the old power, become corrupted by it, and it leads to their own self-destruction. And so because of this, what Old Sam is basically saying is that if they don't find a way to stop Hiro Kala, not only is he going to annihilate everybody on the planet, but the power that he has is equivalent to the power cosmic, and it'll lead to the destruction of the universe. Now, again, you know, because of the fact that Hiro Kala is still searching for Galactus, because of the fact that he still wants to see Galactus killed, all his actions here are designed for the purpose of bringing Galactus in. They're designed for the purpose of basically sending out a homing signal, telling Galactus where he's at and saying, hey, here's a planet here that's rich in old power. You should come to this planet. And so what he's doing is really not unlike the Silver Surfer. When the Silver Surfer takes off to a planet, sends out a signal to Galactus and says, hey, this planet is good for you to come and consume. And so what happens is that while Galactus is presumably on his way after 
detecting the signal of a uh, of Hirokawa, that suddenly we have the forces of dearth and we have the forces of any other kingdom or any other territory that's willing to work against Hirokawa, all invading at the same time. Not only that, we learn that these forces have been unified against Hirokawa by Princess Omaka and Old Sam. Now, this is where things get really cool. And this is why a lot of people are just like, man, dude, like old, like not old Sam, like Hirokawa is a dick. Like he's, this is why I say he's kind of evil, but he's evil by, by necessity, not out of, uh, not out of, out of desire. But what happens here is, you know, with, with the city being attacked, with a city being laid waste to, the hero Kala could stop all of this, but he doesn't. And the people who were there are praying to him. They're like, Hey, you know, we are praying to you, please do what you can to save us. You know, keep us from dying, save our city. And hero Kala won't lift a finger to save any of them. He basically just lets them all die. And this is when the people who are there begin to, you know, come to the realization or start to come to the belief that Hirokawa is just a bad guy. Like he's just a terrible person. You know, he's literally just letting them all, of them, you know, letting all of them die, letting them all, of, uh, letting all of them be destroyed by, uh, by the forces of whoever it is that, that that's trying to annihilate them. But ultimately, you know, there comes a point whereby old Sam, you know, begins to realize what it is that's actually going on. You know, by virtue of his connection to the mysticism behind the old power or the artificial creation of the old power by being able to tap into, you know, his understanding of Hirokawa, he starts to come to the realization of what's happening. At the same time, Princess Omaka is also being taken prisoner by these forces of, uh, of Dearth under the auspices that she was there to lower the force fields, but they don't need her anymore, so they're effectively just going to get rid of her so that they don't have anybody to rival them once they've succeeded at taking out all the forces of Hirokala. But, you know, with Hirokala coming to the realization that, that Old Sam knows what it is that he's trying to do, he kills Old Sam, and then we basically have, you know, Princess Omaka being taken prisoner, and those forces, those people doing whatever it is they're going to do to her. Now, at this point, we transition to kind of like this deal that's being struck. Uh, uh, in the sense that the forces of of Dirth, these these guys, everybody who's basically rallied against uh, against Hirokala, they bring in Princess Omaka and say, "If you stand down, if you surrender this city to us, then we will let you have Princess Omaka back, and you could go off and do your thing. You'll basically be in exile here." But he says no. He says that's not going to happen. Not only that, all of you are going to die. He kills every last one of them, including Princess Omaka. So again, it's really just uh, Paul Jenkins wrapping up all loose ends with virtually everybody who's here. In addition to this, when these guys start trying to fire their cannons to take out, you know, Hirokala, he basically eliminates every last one of them as well. And so it's basically the planet just kind of falling apart, the planet coming apart at the seams, totally going to pieces. And this occurs right when Galactus shows up to consume the planet. And so what Hirokala says is, I've summoned you here. And the reason why I've summoned you here is because I've come to the realization that my ability to use the, the old power is only one half of the equation. If the old power was designed to mimic the power cosmic, then I can mimic the power cosmic as well. And so what he does is he basically just takes the power cosmic itself and the old power merges them into a singular source of energy and disperses them out into Galactus himself. And so what he's basically done is he's just poisoned Galactus. Now, this creates a weird situation because Galactus has never really experienced this before. He's never experienced anybody who's basically able to poison him, to harm him in this way. And what Hirokala says is that this is just a sample of the pain and the suffering and the agony that Galactus will experience. It won't necessarily kill him, but it'll cause him pain beyond imagining more so than he could tolerate. Now, this is actually really important. And what Paul Jingus is doing here is he's tying into the idea that despite being a cosmic energy source and so on and so forth, Galactus is still, you know, uh, he still feels pain. He still feels anguish. And so what this means is that much like a human being who felt pain and anguish, it takes a physical toll. And as a being that's already experiencing constant hunger, if he's going to turn around and use his power to fight off this incessant pain, then it also means he'd be using more energy than he normally would, which would make him even, even hungrier. And basically it would lead to his premature death just by dissipating his energy. It's really just like the, the concept of diminishing returns. You know, if Galactus consumes a planet, but he uses more energy than he gets from the planet he consumes, then it constantly just results in a, in a continual reduction of the energy he possesses, if that makes any sense. And so, you know, what Hirokala says is, you know, because I can do this, you know, if you decide to go around and continue hunting for planets that have old power in them, then you won't know if the planet that I come across or the next planet you come across that has old power is a planet that I've consumed. So he basically says you have one of two choices, you know, let the, let all this go, let the old power, let your connection to it, let it all go and just go back to doing whatever it was you were doing before or take the risk that the next planet that you go to is going to be a planet that's going to give you pain beyond your worst imagining. And so again, Galactus doesn't really uh, speak. He doesn't really talk to him directly. Again, Galactus almost never does talk to anybody directly and he suddenly just takes off into space and calls it a day. Now, the last thing he does, and it's really kind of weird here, but the last thing he does is he basically just kind of like disperses all these souls. And this is the reason why I say that when it comes to the old power, it's much like the force from Star Wars in the sense that, you know, if you could consume it, if you can literally take it and bring it into yourself, then you can basically bring up, you know, bring
bring into yourself the, all the souls of the people who were connected to it, who essentially kind of passed on into the afterlife and are harnessed, or I guess who are connected to the old power. And so by virtue of this, you know, of course we have Kyra basically appearing to Hirokala saying, hey, look, you know, I'm sorry that we forsake you. I'm sorry that we ignored you. We, you know, my, myself and Hulk, we didn't know you were there. You know, I, she's like, I had no idea that you were my son. All I knew was that Scar was out there. The reason for this was because as soon as Scar popped up, he immediately just started like attacking things, wrecking stuff, using the old power. And so it, you know, it was really just kind of like the guy who was shouting the loudest is the guy that got the most attention. And so because of this, Hirokala basically says, you know, you are, you, you're, you're a construct. You are a memory of an energy source that was created that would lead to the destruction of all things. And so because of this, I don't want to see you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Now, of course, the Kyira touches him, you know, she, she offers, you know, one last uh, kind of connection. But ultimately what we learn is that this, this touching that she, that he experienced from her was her basically scarring the hell out of his face. And so the last thing that he decides, the last mission that he takes on with Axeman Bone and the other guys that are there is basically saying, I want to find Scar. I want to find the guy that led to the destruction of my home planet. We're going to find him and we're going to take him out. But with that being said, if you guys are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button to become part of the Rob Core. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like. Again, I usually try to do Incredible Hulk videos every other day. Uh, it doesn't necessarily happen, but it's usually, you know, I usually try to bring them in uh, every other day or so, every couple days, you know, at least two or three times a week, uh, just because of the fact that people really love Incredible Hulk stuff. But uh, in any event, uh, yeah, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this, because like from here, things start to get into like Indestructible Hulk. And I think Realm of Kings is where we get some more Hero Kala stuff. I don't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, uh, yeah, I will catch you all later. Peace. Thank you.